Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. It has literally been so long since I've done a wrap up, so I'm gonna do one of those today and it's going to be both an April and a May wrap up because I really wanted to make sure that I wrapped up every book that I read this year and I have been slacking a little bit, so we're gonna catch up. And then in July, the June wrap up will be up you know, in a decent amount of time. So without further ado, let's just jump into the books that I read in April, which already seems so long ago now, but I'm a little behind, it's fine. It's still relevant to talk about books any time of the year. Okay, so the first book I'd like to talk about that I read in April, I think I actually read it in one day on April 1st, and that is The Traitor Queen by Danielle L. Jensen, and this is the sequel to The Bridge Kingdom. And my favorite part of this book is when you take off the cover of this, like, do you see this? And so you can like visualize kind of like what the island kingdoms look like with the bridge and five stars to this book, obviously, but maybe you'd want to know what the bridge kingdom is about. <laughs> Clara is the daughter of a king. Her and her sisters have been raised their whole lives to be trained to become a spy. And when she is chosen as the daughter to go and marry the ruthless king of the bridge kingdom, Lara must fulfill her duties to her father and give him as much information as possible about this bridge that controls all of the trade and the land um, in this lush jungle kingdom. But what she doesn't expect when she's there is Aaron's kindness or how maybe everything she's been led to believe her entire life might be a complete lie. This is technically like a duology, but there's going to be a spin-off book featuring Laura's brother, I believe. So I just felt like this whole series was perfect. Like the Bridge Kingdom was a slow burn, enemies to lovers, but like only one of them really knows that they're enemies book. And like, I just felt like the whole thing was perfect. Like you can check out the end of my March wrap up for my thoughts on that, but the Traitor Queen really just put these characters in such a tumultuous situation where they really had to like fight to be together and it was just absolutely amazing and everything I wanted out of a second installment and Laura is such like a resourceful badass and she really like kind of proves her worth and like her relationship with Aaron is just like so great because it's like fraught with all of this tension but like the way that things go is just absolutely amazing. So if you were looking for a great fantasy romance, I would definitely check this out. And I will say that it's fantasy romance and the fact that it is set in like a fantasy inspired kingdom, but there's actually like no like real magic system at play. Well, maybe like a little bit kind of, but like also not really, like mostly like what the characters have to do or like their survival skills and not necessarily like magic. So I thought that that was also a pretty cool aspect as well, but like the romance is just good. The spice is good. I loved it. Next we have The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren, which I was sent by the publisher. So thank you so much for sending me a review copy. And I actually don't have it with me because I think I traded it with someone. In The Soulmate Equation, we follow Jess, who is a single mother just struggling to get by as a freelance data scientist and she really doesn't believe in romance. She's been raised by her grandparents who are now helping her raise her seven-year-old daughter, Juno, and she just doesn't have time for dating. But then Jess hears about Genetic Ali, a buzzy new company that uses DNA to match you to your potential soulmate. Jess understands the reality of numbers. At least she thought she did until her test shows the unthinkable. She's a 99% match to Dr. River Pena, who is one of the founders of Genetic Ali and a complete and a total ass, who is without a doubt not her soulmate. But Genetic Ali offers her a preposition. Stick around and see what happens if you get to know Dr. Pena and we will pay you for your time. And as a struggling single mom, Jess can't say no. As they get to know one another, Jess realizes that there may be more to the man and the science behind his soulmate than she thought. So I ended up giving this one 4.5 stars. I just thought it was really sweet and cute. And like as a scientist myself, like I'm always afraid in these types of books if they get like the science part of it wrong. But like most of the science was very like theoretical and didn't get into super detail. So it didn't really like bother me too much because there was nothing, I guess, that was like inaccurate about it. So that part was fine. I thought that the romance was just like adorable and this was just a really lighthearted 
um, and cute fun romance read if you're in the mood for something that will give you a little bit of a pick-me-up and it definitely like appealed to my nerdy side because the characters are like all super nerdy <laughs> Next, we have Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas, and this is the prequel to The Hate You Give. I listened to this one on audiobook. This follows Maverick as he's growing up as a teen, and he is struggling as a teenage father, trying to make ends meet for his mom and also his children. And it's the story of how him and Lisa come together, and basically the story of Star's parents that was kind of touched on in The Hate You Give. And I just thought that this was like an incredibly poignant novel that was just a really important read um, because you get the perspective of like a young black man that is really kind of like struggling in this world that is against him. And of course, I just felt like it touched on a lot of really important topics. I really also like that we got the perspective of teenage pregnancy from the man's point of view because typically in teenage pregnancy books it's more so about like the woman who is pregnant and like how she's dealing with it so i did like that we got the perspective of the father that is trying to provide for his children um as a teenager because that's not a perspective that we get to read from often and i love mav in the hate you give so i'm really glad that we got to read more about his backstory and how he kind of like came to be the man that he is as star's father so of course i gave this five stars Next for April, I did a reread of Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This was one of my top books of 2020, so obviously when I reread it, I loved it again. And this is the Last Hours series in the very expansive Shadowhunters world where we are following the children of the characters from the Infernal Devices. So this is set in like 1900s edwardian london and the shadowhunter world has surprisingly been at peace there really hasn't been a lot of, of demonic activity in london for the past couple years really to keep the shadowhunters occupied and so they kind of have become complacent and lucy and james herondale who are the herondale children of the characters from the infernal devices are really just kind of growing up in this time period where they get to experience a lot of the social aspects of London Shadowhunter life. Then we have Cordelia Carstairs who is coming from afar with her family to rejoin Shadowhunter society in London and her family is basically trying to find her a match to be married off to prevent the ruin of her family as her father is on trial for a crime that Cordelia is sure is just a misunderstanding. She is brought into Lucy and James' glittering world of the Shadow Hunters in London, but however, that world soon comes crumbling down as a series of unprecedented demon attacks that happen in the day rock the London society. London is immediately quarantined and stuck in the city. Cordelia and her friends must figure out what is hunting the Shadow Hunters. Okay, do you see how many tabs I have here? Like, I added, I think, just as many tabs on my second reread as I did my first. Five stars, I mean, Cassandra Clare is just so good at what she does, which is using the Shadowhunter world and creating brand new characters and brand new circumstances so that it is fresh every time that there is a new series. And there's just so much to love in these characters. Like, I really relate to Lucy Herondale, um, just because she's like this but just because she's like this bright bubbly character but just because she has those characteristics doesn't mean that she's not like a strong shadow hunter or anything like that and like all the different character arcs that we follow are just amazing like we have so many side characters and so many different storylines that are seamlessly woven together that just really make this series a joy to read and of course the setting of like of 1900s london is just amazing and like I could go on and on and on about the Shadowhunters series and I have it in like 10 million places in my channel. I have a whole Shadowhunters playlist if you're curious. I've done many Shadowhunters videos, but yeah, I adored this book on my reread just as much as I did the first time and I picked up on so many new details the second time I read it, even though I haven't like continued on because sometimes if you continue on in a series and then go back and reread, you'll catch more foreshadowing things. But I actually caught even more details just in this first book when I reread it again. So that was just really fun and I just love the series. So of course, right after I picked up Chain of Iron, which I was highly anticipating, and let me tell you, this did not disappoint. You see all those tabs? Yeah. I think that this middle novel in the series really just took the angst to a complete new level. It is probably filled with like some of the most yearning 
and like angst in any Cassandra Clare novel that I've read and like that's saying a lot because there's so much angst in every single one of her novels. It's why I adore them. It's why I love them. I come there to get my heart ripped out and <laughs> like just like the tropes that were used in this were just done so well and like sometimes you just get frustrated at the characters because you can see the solution but there's like a reason that they can't see the solution and like a lot of times also like she will take the expected ending of a trope and like turn it on its head so i just felt like i was just so into the story i just didn't know what direction it was going to go and the ending just like left me speechless and i can't wait for the conclusion of this trilogy because it's just always done so well every single time and i will say there's actually a bit of a mystery aspect so this reminded me of lady midnight in that way that we're like trying to solve this like murder mystery that's going on and also gave me like stalking jack the ripper vibes so i loved that and like I don't know, it's just always fresh and new and unique and I'm just always so excited to read these books because of the way that all these characters interact and all the different things that are going on with the plot and how like the Shadowhunters world can just keep expanding and expanding and I don't get bored of it, so clearly I'm a big Shadowhunters fan. <laughs> then I read Yona of the Dawn volume 6. This is a manga series that I have been slowly reading through <laughs> throughout like the last year and this is about Yona who is a princess and she's 16 and basically like she's lived pampered life her whole life being a princess and then these assassins come to the castle and murder her father and suddenly she's on the run with her trusted bodyguard hack and now she must kind of like learn to survive and so this installment was five stars like i just love yona and like in this one um they're going to meet like the green dragon who are these dragon warriors that are like their protector but this warrior has like no interest in helping her so it's like her trying to like convince the warrior to like come and help her like win back her throne so i loved it of course like if you want like a cute manga series like i think this is a technically a show joe manga but it definitely has some like shonen elements in it because of the adventure so i like really like that it has those two kind of aspects to it and i just like adore the series so much and so like i've just loved reading it um throughout my time and i'm obviously still continuing on with the series because there's like 30 something volumes so i'll get there one day Next, I read Dragon and Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, and this is in the Rick Riordan Presents series, and it's Korean mythology in space, which is a really unique and cool combination. And there's going to be a sequel that was just recently announced as well, which is awesome. Or it might be like a spin-off because I don't think it follows the exact same characters. So 13-year-old Min comes from a long line of fox spirits, and to keep the family safe, Min's mother insists that none of them use their fox magic, which means that they can shapeshift at will and use their charms to beguile people. Min would like nothing more than to escape the chores and the drudgery of everyday life on Jinju, her faraway planet where her and her family live, and go join her brother June in the Space Forces. Then word arrives that June has deserted his post to go in search of the Dragon Pearl. And Min knows that June would never willingly abandon the Space Forces. And so she sets off to find out what really happened to June to help clear his name. So I ended up giving this one four stars. I read it via ebook from my library because Keely was like, hey, I'm reading this book. You should read it too. And I'm like, okay. And I got it from the library and I just decided to read it. So it was just like a very fun and adventurous middle grade that I really had a great time reading. I got to learn more about Korean mythology, which was great, but I really loved kind of this very like traditional folklore like amongst this very futuristic setting. I just thought that that was a really great juxtaposition of themes. And Min was just like so bold and adventurous and like willing to do what it took to save her brother and I'd love to see their bond. And like there was a part in this novel that literally like ugh, made me cry because it was just so sad. And yeah, I just really adored this book. Next, I read another audiobook, which is Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, which is the third in the Truly Devious series. And this is the conclusion to, I guess, like the school part of the series because apparently there's going to be like a spin-off series. So this book follows Stevie Bell and she just got accepted to Ellingham Academy, which is this prestigious academy that's kind of known for having this huge murder mystery surrounding the founder's daughter and wife in 1936 when they disappeared. And so Stevie has gotten into this special academy by saying that her specialty is forensics and she wants to study this case. And so she comes to Ellingham Academy and when she's there, 
present day murders start happening as well and so stevie must unravel the mysteries i have enjoyed these books i think i gave this one three stars my issue with this installment is that it just seems like for one central mystery dragging it out over three novels was just kind of um a bit unnecessary and i felt like there wasn't enough being added to the mystery in each one to keep me like fully engaged so i felt like i was just a little bored by the end and i just wanted to know who did it and then i felt like the reveal wasn't as much of like a payoff as like a three book arc like i was expecting so i thought that maybe like if it was condensed it would have been a bit better and i also just found myself more interested in the things that were happening in the 1930s than the present day um it did have some really good anxiety rep because stevie has anxiety and like takes medication to deal with it and that was discussed rather well and so like i enjoyed that aspect of it like i found some like the side characters like annoying like so i don't know it was just like pretty okay to me so I ended up giving it three stars, but I did enjoy my time listening to it. Next up is A Worthy Opponent, which is number three in the Wicked Villain series by Katie Robert. Um, I love Katie Robert. She's like my favorite smut author. She's just like the queen of smut, I feel like. like she just has so many interesting premises. And this Wicked Villain series like takes the story of Disney villains and like gives them love stories. So this one is between Hook and Tink, aka Tinkerbell and like the premise of this series is that they're in Culver City and like Hades, like Hades from Hercules, Hades owns this like BDSM club which is like neutral territory between all like the rival gangs and like so all the characters kind of like meet here and so Tink has been working in this club since she escaped from Pan many years ago and now her contract is up and so like when Hook offers her something she can't resist she doesn't say no and so like now she's with Hook and kind of like how their relationship develops and I'm giving it five stars because I just loved it like it was so spicy like if you're looking for like really spicy really kinky books Katie Robert is your girl because her books are very very steamy and have a lot of different things happening so yeah i definitely want to continue on with this series because like it is just like amazing and like i just love like how steamy and like I, like it's just a great smut series and like i've actually been making my way through like all of katie roberts books and i've loved all of them that i've read so far so no complaints also like the fun like easter eggs to like tinkerbell and like hook was just great but also just seeing their relationship develop i feel like you know like tink is coming from like this place of a lot of emotional vulnerability because of her like past abusive relationship um and seeing how they kind of like overcome those obstacles and like come to trust one another was just like amazing and like there's also some like subplots going on with like the different gangs in the city and stuff like that so i feel like katie roberts books always have like the romance but then also we have like the actual like emotional connection like beyond just the smut of the characters as well as the kind of like central political maneuverings of like the the backdrops um in her book so it's very well balanced in that aspect then next i reread shadow and bone by lee bardugo in anticipation of watching the tv show i haven't watched it yet because i'm in the middle of many tv shows and i'm very slow watching them but i will watch this eventually and so i just wanted to reread this first book before the first season and then i'm gonna like reread the second book before the second season that kind of thing alina starkov is a map maker in the first army and she is just a soldier trying to survive with her best friend mel by her side and she may not survive her first trek across the shadow fold which is just this dark swath of land that is filled with these monstrous creatures and when her regiment is attacked alina unleashes these powers of light that she didn't even know that she possessed and now alina will enter the lavish world of the grisha and be trained in her sun summoning and she has the full undivided attention of the darkling who is the grisha's leader he believes that alina can summon a force capable of destroying the shadow fold i loved it my second time reading it the first time i read it i gave it four stars and i wanted to stick with my rating the second time around and i will just say it's because the plot does falter at certain points where like the pacing is just a little bit off but i still think that this novel like really stands the test of time because the world building is just so great and like the characters are really strong and i think that like the first time i was more like enamored with the darkling where i was like oh my god like the darkling like he's like this dark mysterious man and like sometimes in books like you're meant to be drawn to that like dark 
like villainous character as like a love interest but in this one i can definitely see that the intent is to kind of like pose him as someone that is like alluring and attractive but is overall like a very toxic and manipulative person so we can kind of see alina struggling with that herself in this first book and i feel like the second time i read it i was just more aware of that and i was able to pick up on it more and i really felt like i kind of got more out of the exploration of that like toxic aspect of their relationship the second time that i read it but yeah there was just like a certain point where in the plot where i felt like things kind of like like it felt just like a stumble a bit and then like the pacing was just off but besides that like obviously there's a reason that this got turned into a tv show because the world building is just so imaginative and like clearly with all of her subsequent books like libra Dugo has really matured as a writer and i still think that this first series stands the test of time and i will watch the tv show eventually next i read twisted love by anna huang and this series i saw like all over tiktok right before it was coming out and of course wanted to check it out because it had so many things that i was interested in i feel like anna huang just took all of the tropes and like smushed them in one book and made it like work for her like it works so well so twisted love he has a heart of ice but for her he'd burn the world love it alex volkov is a devil blessed with the face of an angel with a past that he can't escape he's driven by a tragedy that has haunted him his whole life and he's really just consumed with his desire for vengeance but when he's forced to look after his best friend's sister that might all change as ava is just maybe the one that will melt the ice around his heart Ava Chen is a free spirit that is trapped by nightmares of her childhood, but she's never stopped seeing the beauty of the world, especially the beauty of her brother's best friend, Alex. Listen to the description. Twisted Love is a brother's best friend's opposite of track romance with a hint of suspense. And it, this book contains a possessive, morally gray alcohol, explicit sexual content, and profanity. But yeah, so like it's definitely a dark romance and like it definitely has like a little bit of a like a hint of a mafia vibe. So I enjoyed that as well. But if you're just looking for like a really dark romance with some like fun tropes like this is it and like the steam was good the romance was good like i just thoroughly enjoyed like my time reading this and the next series like the next book in the series is going to be a princess and bodyguard be still my heart that's like one of my favorite tropes <laughs> and i definitely need to read like more like smut books that are princess and bodyguard so i'm very excited for that one to come out in july Okay, and that is it for my April books, and now I will move on to May. It is a lot wrapping up two months worth of reading in, in one video, but you know what? I did this to myself, so now I'm going to be doing wrap-ups month by month, so I don't have to do this again in the future. <laughs> okay, so now the May books. The first book I finished in May was A Crown of Killed of Bones by Jennifer L. Armitrout, and this is the third in the From Blood and Ashes series, which follows Poppy, who is a veiled maiden. Everywhere she goes, she wears this veil, and she is, like, revered in her kingdom, but she really is, like, not allowed to speak to anyone or to be spoken to, to experience pleasure. Like, she's very restricted in a lot of aspects of her life. She doesn't really question this, even though she would rather be out on the ramparts with the guards, protecting the city from creatures that are threatening the land until she meets Hawk, a golden-eyed guard who makes her question everything that she's ever known and really like sets her temper alight. And from there, she really just like sets out on a journey of self-discovery and really questioning everything that it means to be the maiden. And now here we are at it, the third book and really just the world has expanded so, so much. I ended up getting this five stars, of course. I loved it. There's just so much witty banter between Hawk and Poppy and like the steam, the spice is good. It's everything that I want in a fantasy romance like i just love fantasy romance as a genre and like this just delivered for me and apparently there's going to be six books in the series which is wild and like the first three of this series have come out in like within the span of a year which is also just like insane to me so and there's also a spin-off series as well so like the worlds just keep expanding and expanding and I'm actually surprised it's going to be six books. I'm like really curious how we can up the ante even more than it's already been upped because we are just really like things, just like a lot of things happened and like it was just insane and I was just so thoroughly entertained the whole time and then I was reading it. I loved it. I adored it. Like I just have a lot of love for this series and even if it's not like the most 100% perfect book in the world, like I just 
love it so much and just like have so much fun reading it that like it just has my heart forever next i read black sunshine by karina hale which is a dark paranormal romance i also love this cover all lenora warwick wants for her 21st birthday is to hang out with some friends at a club and celebrate finally being able to legally drink however that is not what happens a week before her birthday she's kidnapped by a brooding and dangerous stranger with cold eyes and a lethal touch who's been stalking her throughout the streets of san francisco solon stabig isn't your normal criminal he is a centuries-old vampire who's caught between wanting to kill lenore and wanting to save her because you see lenore is also a vampire she's the child of two vampires which means that on her 21st birthday she will turn fully to being a vampire and solon hopes he'll be able to guide her there and it was just like a great vampire romance had like some sexy vampire elements to it as well i really enjoyed seeing how like their relationship developed even though there is like kind of that like captive aspect because of the kidnapping like it is a dark romance right and i just like thoroughly was very entertained and there's going to be a continuation of the series so i can't wait to see where lenore and salon go from here and just like kind of learning more about like the vampire lore of the world was so fun because it definitely things work a little bit differently than i've seen in other vampire novels which i always just love reading new vampire books and seeing how things work differently in each of them Next, I read another Katie Robert book, and that is Abel, and this is the Sabine Valley series. So in Sabine Valley, there are like these three warring factions, and Abel and his brothers were basically like forced out of their faction seven years ago, and now they have come back to reclaim what is theirs, and so they like partake in this, I almost want to say like gladiator style fight, and like for each fight that they win, they get to claim a bride be hand fasted to for a year and so like people fights all the fights and then like chooses influential people for all of his brothers to ensure peace between all the rival clans and so first we follow abel who has claimed harlow as his bride who is the current like wife of his best friend growing up eli and things like just get spicy from there and this is a romance between all three of them so i really enjoyed seeing like a thruple uh, romance and seeing kind of like how eli and harlow work together as a couple and abel and harlow work together as a couple and then um like abel and eli like had their own separate issues from growing up and then like kind of how they were able to like come together the three of them i thought that like romantic aspect was very well explored so i just had a great time reading it and i gave it five stars because i am who i am also like with romances i tend to be like not as critical like if i enjoy it and i think like the steam is good i'll give it five stars i think that this series will have seven books like one following each of the brothers okay so i'm gonna go a little bit out of order here but i just wanted to talk about these two books together because it makes sense because they're the same series so i read keeper of the lost cities ever blaze and keeper of the lost cities never seen and this is a series following sophie who is a 12 year old girl who could read the minds of others and she thinks she's just a human like everyone else until someone who can also read her mind comes to find her and tells her that she's actually an elf and she gets taken to the elf lands which are the lost cities and from there she must like unravel the mystery of herself and like why she was living in the human world with these like extremely strong abilities that are unlike anything that anyone has ever seen before and like the plot just thickens and thickens and like i gave both of these five stars because i just adore this middle grade series unlike any other like there's just like all of her and her friends are just like so cute and adorable and i just like really adore their friendship as they're trying to like figure out their powers and abilities as they're like in a really like turning point of their life and like in terms of turning like discovering their powers and also just trying to figure out this conspiracy that sophie is wrapped up into and like just being great friends and trying to help her through this time and then also like in this one we get a change of setting and we get introduced to new characters as well and so like i just think that this plot is just like so like very in depth and going like more than i thought it would for like a middle grade series and like i just adore every second that i have reading these books because it's just absolutely amazing and like ugh, i could not say enough great things about this series next i read the secret bridesmaid by katie burchall and this was an arc that was provided to me by the publisher actually i have it somewhere around here i literally don't know where it went which is not the first time that i've lost a book so 
Sophie Breeze is a bridesmaid for hire, meaning that she's made her career out of being a professional bridesmaid. She helps the bride with everything that comes up in between planning the wedding all the way to making sure that the wedding day runs smoothly. When she's hired by Victoria Swan to plan the wedding of the year for society, it girl, Lady Cordelia, it should be a chance for Sophie to prove just how talented she is. Of course, it's not ideal that the bride is a total diva and not willing to work with Sophie. And so I am giving this one four stars. Like it was just a delightfully sweet and cute novel. I thought that maybe it was more of a romance, but I think it's more of like a chiclet type book um because like the romance is kind of like a very subplot but it was very cute and i thought it was just really more about sophie and cordelia's friendship i really liked like all the wedding antics that were going on i just thought that they were like some really hilarious like side things that happened but really like the core of the novel is like Cordelia learning to trust Sophie and then like coming together in friendship to help like plan Cordelia's wedding. And it was just like very entertaining, very quick read. And I loved the friendship in it. It's probably the strongest aspect of the book for me. Next I read Yona of the Dawn volume seven. This one is they are trying to free a port town of Awa from an evil tyrant. And so Yona and her friends team up with the green dragon to do so. And of course I gave this five stars. I loved it. I love this series. There's really not much more I can say. Next, next, I read Heartstopper by Alice Oseman, which is about shy and soft-hearted Charlie Spring, who sits next to rugby player Nick Nelson in class one morning and how they become friends and then they become more than friends. And it's the most adorable thing in the entire world. I love the series. It deals with some important topics in terms of like sexuality and coming out and like bullying and it's just done so well, but it's so cute and it just makes my heart ooey gooey and I like love it. And I definitely want to continue out this series because it is everything. I gave it five stars, obviously. Like it's just such like a beautiful novel. Then next is a fantasy romance series that is an absolute new favorite of mine. And that is the Bargainer series by Laura Thalassa, which we have Rhapsodic, A Strange Hymn, and Dark Harmony. Um, I read all of these on Kindle and then I had to buy them physically because I love them that much. I need them on my shelves. And there's also a novella that I read as well called The Emperor of Evening Stars, which is like the backstory of the male in this book and like his life story. Um, so I'll hold up this one. So Calypso Lilis is a siren with a very big problem because when she is a teenager and murders her stepfather, she calls in the bargainer for a favor to help her like clean up the mess. And then from there, she has just been racking up this this bracelet of like black beads that represent favors from the bargainer, who's this like dark fae that will like make any sort of bargain. Only death or repayment will fulfill these obligations. However, the bargainer has like disappeared without a trace seven years ago, and Callie hasn't seen him since. Um, until one day, he reappears in her bedroom and calls in the first of a favor, which is just a simple kiss. And for the bargainer, it's more than just rekindling an old romance. Um, something is happening in his lands, as he's also the Night King, where fey warriors are going missing one by one, and only the women are returning with children at their breasts um, in these glass coffins. And he needs Callie's help to figure out what is going on. Like, you can probably describe this as like a darker Akotar, darker Akomath, but I like, I loved it. I was so impressed by it. Like, it was amazing stunning spectacular five stars like the steam was just everything that i like wanted in a fantasy romance like i read this and i was like okay this is why i love fantasy romance we have like a dark fae we have like this love interest where you don't know like where things are going and then when it's like revealed at the end like what is actually like, going on like i was shook i was shook and i don't even care that it's similar to akatar like i don't even care if like the author just straight up like ripped off akatar like i I don't care because I loved it so much. I thought it was like unique enough on its own. And I adored it with every single fiber of my being. I adored the whole series. I like literally devoured this whole series in probably less than a week. And I'm just obsessed with it. It's my new obsession. Literally, if you like fantasy romance, read Rhapsodic. Like it is worth it. And then I have one last book to talk about and I'm exhausted from talking so much. <laughs> And the last book that I have to talk about is an absolute new favorite of mine. No surprise, I finally read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab and loved it. V.E. Schwab has been one of my favorite authors for like probably as long as I've had this channel. And I read, 
think I read a darker shade of match like right before I started this channel actually back in 2018 and like I've been anticipating this book for literal years I went to her signing for vengeful and she mentioned that she was writing a book like with this premise and I was like wow I can't wait to read it and I read it and everything so in france 1714 a desperate young girl makes a deal with a god that answers after dark she can live forever but no one will ever remember her name and every year on the anniversary of their deal the dark god comes to ask if she's ready to give up her soul yet and every year addy keeps saying no she lives life moving through the cracks of history never being remembered by anyone until one day in a dusty old bookstore someone actually remembers her name okay this book was perfect like this is definitely you can tell like probably more on the like speculative speculative fiction side than v.e schwab's other works which have been more like fantasy um i guess even though this is like a fantasy like it felt like very like adult literary speculative fiction so it just felt very mature and i just feel like that shows that v.e schwab is like very maturing as a writer this is like uh, such like an acclaimed book and for a reason because it is just so beautiful like there are so many quotes in this book that were just amazing and like you're really like she's really like thought out like all of the details of Addie's deal and like you are in the past and you get to see like how Addie came to make this deal and how she like learned to survive with these like terms that were placed on her as well as like how she's living in modern day new york and like when she meets this man that like can remember her and like how they kind of like come together and it's just like absolutely amazing and the ending i was like pulling some twists and turns that i did not expect and like i cannot say anything more except for the fact that like i just adored this five stars obviously like it is worth the hype it also like um has like a multimedia aspect to it i guess as well because it like brings in a lot of art um as you can like see here so like i just like love when like other aspects and things are incorporated into the story so like it's just like so like it just draws you in and you just really feel for Addie and like her journey and like ugh, it's just amazing like if you want like a more mature V. Schwab book and like just to really I don't know like understand what it is to like live and have people remember you and just like have this book have this kind of like impact on you where it really makes you think like definitely read this book I loved it i adored it oh, just so so good and with that that is the last book that i have for this re uh, wrap up don't be like me do your wrap ups a month at a time because filming two months worth of books wrapping them up is exhausting i want to go take a nap i won't go take a nap though i'll go read more so i have more books to talk about because that's just the booktube way of life so with that being said let me know if you've read any of these books down below like just comment and like if you have any thoughts on any of the things that i said about these books anything to add like just let me know i would love to chat with everyone in the comments so have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one